um, a, a youth, a smaller one. Um, you know, I could go on and on, but they, they have these. Inter- I, I talked to um in the uh, Pisgah National Forest area, uh, abutted to it on some private land. I talked to a hunter uh, just earlier this year who was telling me about how he was bringing corn to his bait stands, and he, he could hear these noises and knocks when he'd arrive. And one of the times uh, he got in there, he had these 75-pound sacks of corn, and he took one in 150 yards in. The other one was on the back of his truck, and he came back. And said, this is in the woods, and it was gone. Now you tell me an animal in the woods that's going to pick, going to pick up a seventy-five pound sack of corn and just take it. And he said it wasn't bare. It was clean. There was no trace of anything. Yeah, and com- it was completely just- gone. That, yeah, a yeah, raccoon would have made a huge mess. And right. uh, Rick, well, I'm I, yeah, and uh, everyone, uh, very very excited to welcome Lori Wade to the show. Lori, good evening. You are on the air. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Hi, Lori. Hey, Rick. How are you? Good, real good. Well, well welcome welcome to the show. We were uh, having a discussion about uh, Bigfoot and hunter interactions in the woods. Um, and, and uh, you know, we, it was, we were talking about how we get a lot of reports where hunters have encounters with these things, never to go back to the area they were in again, you know, sort of thing. Or Bigfoot's taking the, you know, deer off the back of the pickup truck, that sort of thing. So, that's what we were chatting oh, about. Oh, yeah. You hear, you, hear, you hear so many times where people don't even, they don't go hunting anymore. They just right. they yeah. completely stay out of woods. And, yep. and we, were, we were talking about that. And uh, also, uh, Lori, one of the things that uh, Rick and I were chatting about just before you called in is why some people seem to have encounters with these creatures all the time. And others can look for it. No, wait, Rick, is that what we were talking about with Lori? I forget. Yeah, I mean, we were saying that, uh, <laughs> you were, you were saying I don't know, Lori will like this topic because when we've been on expeditions together, we've had this discussion. But uh, some people get activity all the time, and others just don't seem to. Um, you know, ongoing, and it seems like the ones a lot of times that have activity it keeps repeating itself over and over and whether the Bigfoot show themselves to them more receptively or those people have their antenna up, I don't know. You know, what do you think? You know, uh, long ago I was on an expedition, and I believe it was maybe, I don't know, second or third expedition, and uh, there was a Native American there, and he did this little ceremony with us, and he pretty much told us some words to chant, and he said, you are asking Bigfoot into your heart, and you are asking him to know that you have a clean, pure heart and that you're not there to harm them. And that kind of stuck with me. Um, at the hmm. time, I just, you know, I was mesmerized by it. Um, and, and we did have activity that night when we were on the trail with him. And, and I, I kind of believe that same thing. I think that if you're ever zapped or anything like that, and you have a, I will say an open mind, for lack of a better word, um, if you have right. an open mind, I think that you're more liable to have activity than someone that goes out there with that rigid mindset of, I'm going to go see a Sasquatch, I'm going to go see a Sasquatch, and I'm going to listen for everything. I think those people tend not to get the activity, or especially anyone that has any thoughts in their mind of harming them. Right, and we, we were saying, you know, with hunters, uh, they're predictable when they're out in the woods. Well, you know, they're carrying a gun. They show up with different, you know, clothing, whether it's orange. Uh, you know, they station themselves. Uh, they're in a the hunter mindset. They're looking down the barrel of the gun and sighting. They've got, you know, they're they're baiting the areas they're going into, so whether it's deer hunting or bear hunting, you know. Uh, the Bigfoots are great well, observers. Well, you and, and they I have talked about this many times. Yeah, you and I have talked about this many times. Of we don't go into the woods with the mindset of being quiet. Um, right. You and I have been on expeditions before. We go into the woods. We're singing. We're laughing. We're having a good time. A hunter typically is going to go into the mindset of being really quiet, trying to, um, you know, trying to find his prey. I mean, we, and I don't, I don't really like that mindset. Right. No, and you know, we should elaborate a little bit on the. What you said for the listeners and everything, Sanjay, I'll get a kick out of it. But, you know, we, so Lori and I are fortunate enough to, uh, you know, be in a lot of expeditions together. And uh, she does a wonderful job of organizing these. 
we've we've done them in a lot of states uh, through you know all over the south and she and I have been on expeditions all over the country and uh, oh, over in western Canada too but, uh, um you know we you, you do you know I like to start with the native american approach and the chance and things but you kind of learn things that work Sanjay and maybe things that don't but you can't out tech these things you can't trick them you can't sneak up on them you might as well give all that stuff up give it up and if you're very to her point if you're very natural and having fun you know these things are because they are great observers are looking at people in the woods at uh you know one in the morning singing and laughing and they can't resist getting close because they're curious about what you're doing and why you're having such a good time yeah i think so you know, you know. yeah i agree go ahead i'm sorry rick no, no, go ahead. I talk, you know, you talk about well, some of the things you know that have worked for us. Talk about. Well, I mean, you know, um, like I said, you and I have went through the woods singing show tunes before, and I'm sure yep. some of the people with us thought we were thought we were crazy, um, yeah, but laughing and. I'm losing my signal a little bit, guys. I may have to go to a different location. Um, oh, but, sorry about that. You yeah, know, you faded out there for a second, Lori. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, you know what? I'm going to try a different location. <laughs> Sometimes I okay. don't get a great signal here. Um, you know, the hunter mindset is so different than just somebody that's out there having fun. And, uh, you know, you, you do things that work. Um, sometimes you just go and build a campfire in the middle of the woods. And if we really believe that they know we are here the minute that we get into the woods, then you have to believe that they've watched enough to know people who are having fun or people who are going to be harmful. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think they know, but they know intent, Sanjay, they understand your intent. I think before you get there, to your point earlier, a hunter's in there with a gun to kill something, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, uh, so what, let's, let's talk about zapping. Because, Lori, when you and I spoke yesterday, we had a really good conversation about your zapping experience um, on one of these expeditions. And uh, Not, my, not well, my fondest experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not mine. When I've had it happen to me, I, hasn't, I haven't enjoyed it either. And uh, <clears throat> why, you know, I guess the question is, you know, we know what zapping is. We know people who have experienced it. The question is, are, is it a warning to, quote, unquote, get out of that area? Or is it simply saying, we're try- are they trying to debilitate us to perhaps cause, you know, serious harm? I don't believe the majority. I'm not saying there's not rogue Sasquatches out there, but the majority mm-hmm. of them I don't believe want to harm us. I really okay. believe that they use it when they need to to debilitate us, to stop us from going any further. I think it's mostly done when we're getting too close to the family unit. That's truly mm-hmm. my belief. I have nothing to base that on, just what I believe is the case. I think when you get too young, too close to the family or too close to a young one, you get zapped to stop you in your tracks so that they can get back to safety. Mm -hmm. So let me bring up this question then, Rick, because this is a topic that is dear to your heart and mine, and that is the branch assemblies. And the reason I I want to ask your question on this is it's been my experience in areas of significant or increased activity that I've come upon a very large nest type of assembly that looks like a shelter or a nest or what have you. And I've come back the, like even the next day, and it's been completely destroyed. Mm-hmm. Have you, have you, have yep. either of you experienced that? Um, I had an area of research in uh, central Wisconsin. I was in all the time, and I watched them build these in this area. I'd go into it every week, and it went from none to one, two, three of the same kind and different kinds, and all of a sudden it was, you know, 15 or 20 of these things all in an area where if you just turn your head, you could see them all side to side, 180 degrees. 
And then at the mm-hmm. end, it seemed of the at the end of the season, they took them all down. So I, I mean, I went in, they were gone, and hunters didn't do it, or other. You know, these some of these things are elaborate to your point and big. So I've seen them put them up. I've seen them stay year after year, and I've seen them take the things down. But one one thing that ties into this discussion. When you see an area of these things and you go in there at night, even during the day, I often believe you have you have activity. I've experienced it, and I think they're watching those. Okay, mm-hmm. I have a question. Um, Sanjay, when you've seen these nests, were they in different parts of the country, or were, were they mostly in the north? Uh, you know, well, most of my research has been in the in the Midwest uh, here. You know, okay. Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan. So that's where I've seen most of them, Lori. I I haven't really uh, seen them in other parts where I you know I've I've done some research in Tennessee. Some oh no, I have found nests in Tennessee, Rick. When okay, I went on that I was going to say I've never seen them in the yeah. South. Mm-hmm. I've, I've and I wonder if that's more of a yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I, I was wondering if maybe that was more of a uh, um, a regional thing. A regional, you know, where they, you, you know, know, where they have to build nests, and, and maybe yeah. not in the south. But because when I've done research in Florida, um, I had a, a colleague in Florida at one time who was very upset about the fact that he could never find any. And he was, you know, he was going back in the swamps. He was going back in the the swamp thickets. And, you know, there's some pretty heavy brush, you know, woods down there. And a couple of years later, I was down there with his father and found a whole slew of them. And I realized that they're constructed differently than they are here, but the forms were the same. Right. Which was but it's it's certainly not as prevalent as what I've found in Michigan, and you know the, the ones that I've seen in Michigan are incredible, ju- just amazing constructions that literally come up overnight or disappear overnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, um, they don't. You know, it's funny. So you always have to. I always, you know, because I've put a field guide together on these. I'm always saying not everything in the woods is. Bigfoot related stick structure wise, um, and you know right. pines are right. notorious. <laughs> pines are notorious because they have no root system of falling in disarray with wind storms and wind shear. So you have to be careful with all that, you know, especially with pines. But um, they do take different forms. I've seen some. Um, I've done some research down in Florida and uh, Mayaka uh, State Park in that area, and I've seen them, you know, with palm fronds and things. So they're the same type of maybe a you know an arch or um, an upside down check mark that kind of style down there but they're different and you'd miss them if you didn't know but they they do the same geometry but use maybe different vegetation yes yes exactly and you know the the six pointed star you know laid out in, in perfect geometric precision which it, which is always a sort of giveaway or uh you know the upside down trees you know jammed into the earth and, and so on and so forth but it it, it it does seem to be more of a northern uh behavior i guess rick and laurie I, I don't even recall seeing that i've only seen a few in ohio now that you now, i've seen it. lots of stick structures in the south but i've never seen nest um so oh, that was I the only see. thing okay. that I was. I've seen lots of stick structures. It, but it's okay, but I've just never seen any kind of nest or nest building type things here. Oh, um, and that's okay. why I was kind yeah. of wondering if it was just because the terrain was different, or the weather is such a vast difference between, you know, Wisconsin and here. I mean, if we get a snowflake, we're surprised. <laughs> right. 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 Although, you know, and let me point this out, too. The ones that I found in Crab Orchard, one was built into on, in the underside of an overhanging rock ledge. So it, oh, it, it cool. was almost like a cave. And, and now that I think about it, there's a lot of granite in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And, and I, would ha- I, would, I, would, I would suggest maybe instead of nests, they're, they're burrowing into the hills or into the rock caves. There are a lot of caves in the in the south, a lot of caves, yeah. and I maybe they just don't require 
the nesting as much here as they do. Just just a thought. I don't know. No, it, it's, it's, it, it, because it points. Yeah, go ahead, Rick, please. Yeah, so I'll add one thing to that because um, it comes into my head as to, you know, because I've done a lot of big footing now in the south and did a lot in the north, you know, having lived up in, in the different parts. So it, it's a good observation, you know, the nest or the blind type of thing. I would run into those in Wisconsin. I've seen those in upstate New York. And maybe it's – I would always look at how they build them, and I think it's, some of it is weather-related uh, or nesting type of related, a place to get out of the elements overnight. Uh, I think it's something, you know, in the south we have different trees and different growth. We have an awful lot of uh, um, mountain laurel, which yeah. wrote it right. And that stuff covers any of the waterways. It's all over the top. I'm thinking of something that Matt Prude always says to us, you know, where he is, like they're in the mountain laurel or they're in the rhododendron. And I think that those, you know, those plants grow and make a great cover and grow over the waterways or the feeder streams, the lakes and things. And I, you know, uh, we've had experience around that stuff where they've been in it. And uh, I'm thinking about, you know, when we were up in uh, Western Virginia there and their hungry mother. Over there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, I mean, Rick, where we were at last week, look at all the yeah. rhododendron and mountain laurel we yep. had last week where we're yep. literally three feet off the trail. You couldn't see past that. And right. easily something could be behind that and you would never, ever know it. Never see. And you'd walk right past yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, Although, yeah, I think you're you know natural I'm, cover someday. Uh, I was just realizing, though, I, a few years ago, I went to Uwari National Forest in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And, and Rick, many I, times. I think you, yeah, and I actually did document quite a few branch assemblies there. Mm hmm. Yep. Which were there, very there's large. a lot of research done in that area. Yeah, there is. Oh, is there's there, a lot of research you, in that I, area with a lot I of should, people. I should send you my report. I, th- I think you'd enjoy it. Oh, I'd love to read it. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of activity in there. But, you know, to get back to your point on the whole uh, zapping thing, and, you know, um, you teed that up. I'd like to hear Lori chat a little bit about, you know, uh, one or two of her encounters that to describe what the zapping felt like and, I'll pitch in a little on that, and you too, Sanjay. But where I'm going to go with this is I think the zapping takes different forms. Um, you know, they can, it, I, I, I don't disagree with what Lori's saying about maybe you're around the family unit and they want you out of there. Clearly, they want to intimidate you and get you out of there when they okay, do it. Okay, guys, 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 mm-hmm. I do not yep. mean to interrupt, but this is the third time now in the last half hour something's Outside the house. <laughs> really? really? Yeah. When when I first uh, shut the front door and sat down to start the show, there was movement outside. About ten minutes ago, I heard it again, and just now something was brushing up against the side of the house where the air conditioner is. They know that Rick and I are on the phone. That's it. I guess so. <laughs> it, it's holy cow. <laughs> Sorry, it's just they want to talk. They there. want to talk to us. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm not about to go outside and talk to them. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark well, out. <laughs> you know, well, it, changing the subject slightly. That's so funny because how many times are we out in the woods and that's what we're doing? We're looking right. for them, and then we're like, "Well, let's go." <laughs> you know, you get well, what I call go. the EBGBs. You know, you get the right. EBGBs, yeah. and you just. You're like, I know I'm out here doing this, but oh, I don't want to be here now. You know, you just get that uneasy feeling, that sixth sense. Yes. But, uh, you know, so, I think he's, he's having some activity there, Lori. But if you and I and Sanjay were walking on a trail in the dark in the woods right now, talking just like we're talking now about stuff, what would happen? All of a sudden, they'd be there. They'd be around. Because yes, we're comfortable. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> yep. We're comfortable. We're talking about it, talking about that. All of a sudden, they show up. So that they've showed up at your house, Sanjay. What did Lori say a little while ago? The Native American said, "You know, let them into your heart." I think you might want to tell them that. Um, you know, you know what? I have enough problems with the big hairy males <laughs> coming after me. I, I don't think I need any more. Sorry. You it's, should it's, send probably... them a text, okay? <laughs> right, Rick? Send them a text yeah, on a BlackBerry. <laughs> text them. So, so. 
Yeah, but Lori and I, stop me if I tell you this before, Sandra, but Lori and I were uh, once on an expedition, and we had no walkie-talkie communication. It was in northern Wisconsin, and uh, we're trying this to communicate. This was years ago. Was years ago. Years ago. <laughs> Two other groups, and Lori's standing next to me. We're in a swamp area. There's a lot of brush close to us. And I'm uh, clicking on my phone, trying to coordinate, you know, text back and forth to the other group. You know how your phone, maybe you can make a, it has a click noise when you tap. And all of a sudden, right yep. behind Lori and the brush in the woods, we hear that we hear the clicking noises coming back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lori looks at <laughs> I looked at, look at Rick and I'm like, they've got a Blackberry behind me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> she said, they're texting you. <laughs> I didn't, but oh, it sounded great. just like how a Blackberry sound. It was click, click, click. So I did it again. Well, said, she's like, do it again. So I did it again. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm typing and she's, and it happens again. So they're mimicking back and forth and back and forth. And we started to laugh. I mean, and it was close. It was real. Remember, there were those, uh, what were they? They were, um, those big reeds, um, bamboo. It was like a bunch of bamboo were behind me, so you yeah. couldn't see through them. But I swear it sounded like they were trying to text Rick. I mean, I know that sounds funny, but that's just the sound it made. It was like click, 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 send. <laughs> I, and Rick just wasn't getting the text or something. I don't know. But right. That was crazy. But were, yeah, we we tried to figure out how they did it. Next day, we were picking up small rocks and clicking them, and it and you could re, you could get the sound. So they were mimicking what we were doing. It's like we're here, just like we were saying, okay, we're here, we're near you guys, we're gonna let you know we're here, um, not in an intimidating way, almost in a laughing, mimicking way. But that's what they did. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. So that's um, a funny we, story, but it go. was fun too. <laughs> it sounds like fun. Well, and you do hear that. You do hear. I mean, I had an experience up in the uh, Upper Peninsula a couple of years ago, where they imitated the sound of a car, my car door slamming, mm-hmm. and, and I thought someone was breaking into my car because it was the only. I was the only vehicle there, and I thought, is someone getting into my car? And then I realized, no, because if someone had opened my car door, the alarm should have gone off, and they were this imitating the, the sound time. of the car. Yeah. Yeah, this is the third time in two weeks that I've heard about a car door imitating yeah. a car oh, door. Oh, have you really? Third yep. time in two weeks. Oh, yeah, we had just it. said that, and my mouth dropped open. I thought, are you kidding yep. me? Yep. Yeah, no. And no, it, 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 yeah. yeah. We had it. We had it just an uh, expedition, Lori and I were on uh, a couple of weeks ago in, uh, you know, mountains. Uh, well, I can just say in general, East Tennessee, but uh, – uh, we had groups, what do we have, four or five groups out each night, and they were coming back and debriefing the next day, which is best practice. We do that at our expeditions. But they're all reporting hearing car doors slam out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Holy cow. That's you know, something. I don't know. Yeah, we, I heard it. You know, I know other, you know, and you know there's no vehicles anywhere near you. How do they do that? How do they how do they do that? Is that something they do, you know, with their mouth or something? how do you make a car door sound? I, I truly I don't, know. Don't, <laughs> don't know. Yeah, I, I That's mean, just interesting that you said that because, you know, I've heard it three times now and that's just, now that's something I'm going to have to listen for when I think it's a car door somewhere. I'm going to have to think, wait a minute, there's no cars around me. Right. Well, and not only right. that, it's such a normal sound that when you hear it, you don't, you know, don't immediately associate it with anything but a car door. You know, we, we hear right. car doors open and shut all the time. And there's just been a big stomping noise outside. So I'm looking out the window to see what's going on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I... <laughs> They, you know what? You know, uh, I think they know that Rick's on the line, but I think they really know, Lori, that you're. On the line. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the southern like, accent. We, we, they're thinking, "Who are yeah, you?" Yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's that southern charm. You know, they're, they're, <laughs> they don't like, know. Oh, they don't know me, do they, Rick? <laughs> no. They're like, well, Lori's they know, on, they on the phone. We got to talk to her. Yeah, yeah they, don't, really they yeah, don't really you're a know me. <laughs> Yeah, they well, know you. 
<laughs> they have, they have, they're like, oh, he's, he's got a woman my, in there. we got to talk to her. My mm-hmm. husband says I'm the meanest woman alive, okay? <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, you were really nice to me yesterday. But if you want to be but mean you to Rick, well, if you get go on right my ahead, bad side, Rick can tell oh, you now. Well, yeah. People who know Rick and I, I love Rick. I love him immensely. But I can also get mad at him, and I we will argue like a brother and sister sometimes, and uh, then we hug and make up. But it's it it's never serious. It's just I'm a southern well, woman, and I have you know I I have a temper. <laughs> well, you have. But we. Uh, that's right. But um, Lori has a lot of activity in the woods. I have a lot of activity in the woods over here. Lori's had two Class A sightings, I think, if that's right. And, uh, I've had three over the years. Uh, we've and had one of them was other... with you. <laughs> one was with you, yes. Yeah. Um, but we we get activity, Sanjay, and I think one common thing between Lori and I, we're both expressive, but we both have our antenna up higher than a lot of other people. And mm-hmm. you know yeah. we know what's yeah. going on around us very very we know what's going on around us very very well it seems like especially when as she and I are together in the woods with a group um, you know we're picking up the signals and the stuff happens you know we're talking about some people don't get activity others do Lori and I get activity. What have I told you before when we've been in the woods I'm like my spidey sense is is on right you know I can yeah. usually go and tell when it's just going to be a really quiet evening or there's nothing mm-hmm. going on, or I usually know my antenna gets up and I'm like, okay, you know, they may not be close, but they're, they are here. And, and I just, um, I've had several incidents happen that I just feel like somehow, some way I have some kind of connection yep. that I just have a, I have that extra little sense that tells me when there's something going on or I yep. don't know. I hate to say stuff like that. Uh, but it's true. I don't know. Yeah, it is true, but, but I, I hate to say it because I, I can see people rolling their eyes up. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound that way. But there there really is. I mean, they, every time that I say that, you know, I, my neck's tingling or whatever, something happens. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Lori, how many times do we put groups together and we send six groups out and next day uh, Rick's group always has activity kind of thing? I mean, I'm almost to the point I'm just used to it. I expect it. If I don't if right. I don't get activity, if I don't get activity, something's wrong. But one of the things that's in common between your approach and my approach is we both talk to the woods, we both sing and laugh, we're comfortable out there, we're not trying to trick them. And if they make the first move, right. like we were saying last week, Sanjay, if they make the first move, then you can dialogue back and forth with them and and they stick around. Yeah. Rick, we are both control freaks. Okay? That, <laughs> oh. that is seriously. We are, we are both control freaks. So, you know, what, what happens on a trail with me in the woods, it, it's, it, you know, I've already got in my mind, hey, we're going to go walk down here, we're going to do this, and, you know, you can do this. It doesn't mean that I won't uh, let anybody try anything, but it, I've already got it set in my mind, and it, it's the same with Rick, and you kind of, once you start getting that interaction, you you change your agenda a little bit. But right, um, yes, that's kind of yes. why Rick and I butt heads because we both like to control things a lot. <laughs> well, well, let me let me ask question. this question. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, hello. Oh, so I yeah, think Lori, I, I know we've sort of gone in a quite a meandering uh, conversation here, which has been fantastic. But l- let's get back to what something you said just a minute ago here which I thought was very interesting. And I, and I wonder how this relates to zapping and mind speak. Now, so you say when you go into the woods, you're aware of, you know, what's out there, what's waiting. And quite honestly, I am the same way. In, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, I was on an investigation. And even as we pulled up in the truck, I wanted to turn to the driver and say, please park the truck facing out. Mm -hmm. So if we need to leave, we can leave. And I I realized even before getting out of the the truck that there was, we were being watched. There was something in the woods watching us that knew we were there, that knew we knew they were there. You know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my zapping because that is the only time that I've ever felt 
like I had to leave. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there's been times where where I might get frightened, and anybody who tells you they don't get frightened in the woods at night, they're lying. You know, they're just lying because anybody can get startled by anything or just, again, what I call the eebie-jeebies and just be like, mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable here. 